You might have heard the news that Nintendo is coming after everybody. Not just emulators, but YouTubers who cover emulation content as well. I shouldn't really say YouTubers, because they seem to be unfairly targeting Retro Game Core specifically. He just received his second copyright strike from Nintendo Japan, which is a massive misuse of the copyright system, but we're not going to get into that right now. So he's understandably no longer going to be showing Nintendo content running on these emulators. I understand that, and I'm going to be joining him for now. So for this video, we'll try our best to refrain from showing Nintendo IP on this particular device. I really like the way this thing looks. It feels like a premium Game Boy Micro. It's like an emulation brick of glass and aluminum. This is an Ioneo Pocket Micro. It's an Android-based emulation handheld that's kind of powerful, but not really that powerful. It doesn't play GameCube games 100%. It's capable of going up to Nintendo Switch emulation, but if you want quality emulation, you'll probably want to pick and choose your games or just keep it under GameCube. It really shines with Game Boy Advance games. They all look stunning on here. If you want Game Boy Advance emulation to look this good, you'll be paying a premium for it. I usually don't love Ioneo devices. They're usually more money than they have any right being, and they're also guilty of releasing a ton of SKUs very rapidly. But I will give them some credit though, because their build quality can feel premium and they also switch things up every once in a while. This is at least a unique design for them. They're not just releasing four of the same product one after another after another. For retro emulation, this could be a phenomenal device. If you want to play like Android games, you'd probably want something else. The setup process to get your retro library on here can be a bit of a pain. It's not as streamlined as I would have hoped. And the hardware does have some jank to it. So if you're an enthusiast of these handhelds, you'll love this. If you're new to this scene, either do a lot of research, get ready to tinker, or consider your options. This video is sponsored by Trade Coffee. Trade is one of the few sponsors that I used way before they ever sponsored me, and I still use to this day, I pay for my own subscription. So I always like to try to do something special for them. I see these YouTube videos all the time, day in the life of a barista, and I wanted to try something like that, but uh, my footage didn't come out the way that theirs normally does. Hey guys, thank you so much for coming on my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be making a flat white. It's one of my favorite coffee drinks to do every single day. But before we get into that, please like this video and subscribe for more content. Okay, let's jump right into it. The first thing that we're gonna do is really hot. I didn't think my nose was that big. I like to try all different types of coffees from local roasters and I like it fresh and trade is the best way to get all of that stuff to be delivered right to my door. Of course, you don't have to do it with espresso like I do. You can do it with regular filtered coffee. You can do it in an arrow press. However you like to enjoy your coffee, just let them know and they'll match you with coffees that'll best suit your taste. This week I got Alma Coffee Essence Espresso Roast and it's got notes of dark chocolate, rich caramel, and roasted almond. Up your coffee game at home, go to drinktrade.com slash wolfden and get your first bag for free. That's drinktrade.com slash wolfden to get your first free bag with any new subscription. I can already tell that some of you probably already wrote in the comments, how could it be hard to set up an Android device? I need you to take a step back and remember that people who maybe haven't done this before or are just watching one of these videos for the first time probably don't know what a Moopin is. I used to really love Android for emulation devices because of how easy it is to set up those devices, but now we're so deep into this emulation hobby that there are a plethora of devices that streamline that setup process. But I do wanna give Ioneo some credit because they have a pretty decent launcher on here that is pretty easy to navigate, but we'll get to that. 
This version has eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of internal storage, as well as a micro SD card slot. It runs on a MediaTek Helio G99, which should be capable of emulation from NES all the way up to GameCube and PlayStation 2. But in my experience, GameCube was kind of a miss. If you're gonna be emulating PS2 and GameCube, maybe expect to be only playing turn-based games or something. That way you can keep your expectations in check. This is also Android 13, so even if it's not powerful enough, you can still put whatever emulator you want on here just to try it out. This whole thing currently costs $229.95, but it could go up to $240.95. I paid $295. Wait, I paid more? Why did I pay more? I, I crowdfunded this. I paid more? I was early bird. What happened to early bird? I guess it did come with a bunch of stuff. I got stickers, a case, a, a, a cool cup. Real gamers, no gamers. This thing is reasonably small, but feels pretty great in the hands. Some people were concerned about these sharp edges. Maybe the corners might be uncomfortable, but that didn't affect me at all. The shoulder buttons are in line and they feel fine, but I do wish the L1 and R1 were a little longer, came closer to the edges. The D-pad is awesome. It's one of my favorite things about this device. It feels really nice. The thumbsticks stick out a bit too much. It makes this thing a lot less pocketable. I wish they went with 3DS style circle thumbsticks for this. I wonder if I can mod those into there. I'll have to think about that. The face buttons also feel a little closer together and mushy. Rocking my thumb between the buttons doesn't exactly feel all that great. There's some extra buttons here on the side. I thought it was like an SD card slot or something but one says RC and one has three dots. And when you click on the RC, nothing happens. And when you click on the three dots, sometimes it goes to the home screen and sometimes it, it just does nothing. Not to mention they are in a terrible spot. So when you're gripping it, sometimes you just, you just press it. And sometimes it'll do something. Sometimes you might get lucky and it won't. The speakers on this thing are god awful. I was just using this on the train and I learned that there is no headphone jack at all on here. Luckily, I always carry around with me a USB-C dongle and that will work. However, if you enable USB-C audio, it disables the controller. The USB-C port must be on the same pinout as the controller. That's insane. I guess if you wanna wear headphones, you're gonna have to rely on Bluetooth audio, which is crazy, because I don't use wireless headphones. And the start and select buttons are kind of in a weird spot, but it's not the end of the world. The other side has a home button and an I and Neo button, which brings up an on-screen display, which is kind of small. The OSD also has performance overlay settings, so you can see your frames per second, your CPU and GPU usage, stuff like that, even though it's very tiny. There's also performance modes. There's just balanced, ooh, and game mode. I leave it on game mode the whole time. That's gonna use more battery life. This thing's got pretty decent battery life. Uh, there's also different fan modes. This one's always on high because I like to use it as close to the highest potential power as possible. The fan is not that loud. You'll see there's fan holes in the back and at the top. It's very quiet, so you wouldn't really notice the fan that much. I would bet you probably can't even hear that. This screen is very nice. It's an OLED screen, which I know drives all the ladies nuts. I noticed that around the edges, you can kind of see a little bit of bloom and it doesn't really look like it's solid black, which is usually a telltale sign that it's an LCD backlit display. Yeah, that looks darker. Is this a real OLED screen? <laughs> Here's the problem. Their website says that it's display type OLED, but up here it says IPS. It's IPS. And the screen is rather small. And a lot of the text, even in Ioneo's own launcher that was made specifically for this device, is way too small. 
Navigating the touchscreen to set this thing up is an awful experience. The screen is 3.5 inches and has a resolution of 960 by 640, which is a perfect four times scale for Game Boy Advance games. So those games look absolutely stunning on here. Unfortunately, that makes it a weird aspect ratio. It's three by two. The only other device that I know of that has a three by two aspect ratio screen is the bottom screen of a 3DS. But I actually think that three by two is a great compromise, somewhere between four by three, which is what your retro games will be playing at, and 16 by nine, which is what your modern games will look best at. So you're kind of right smack in the middle. I just wish there was an additional button on here somewhere so that you can like swap screens in 3DS or DS emulation or quickly make a save state or something. I just use the thumbstick click for these actions. When you first turn this thing on, it will greet you with the normal Android setup, which is a bitch to do on this tiny screen. Once you set all of that up, it tosses you into the launcher, which wouldn't work with the controller when I first tried it, but then it eventually did work. One thing I noticed about this is that there's a little gamepad toggle right here, and it randomly just turns itself off every once in a while. The controller just stops working. I have to go over here and flick this to on every so often. It's really annoying. There's a lot of little details about this thing that just weren't polished out. Opening up the iNeo app greets you with an option to import your game packages from a litany of other launchers. Haven't imported your retro games yet? Quickly import the game and experience the fun of the game that has never faded. If only I had any clue how to do any of this. There isn't an option on Deck for desktop to export your game packages or whatever they call it. So I'm just gonna move all of my ROM files manually. With every Android handheld that has a decent amount of internal storage, I like to just plug it into my computer and dump all of my ROMs manually, just drag and drop. It makes it super easy. For whatever reason, this device would not connect to my computer and file transfer at all. I spent a long time huffing and puffing about the USB not being able to do file transfer, but if you go into the settings and you go to connected devices, this little USB mode checkbox, you just turn that on and it shows right up on the computer. Had I known this, I probably would have been more favorable during the setup process, but it's fine now. Then I calmed down and I just took the micro SD card from another handheld and just dragged my ROM files over one system at a time because the iNeo has its own folder structure. If you have MUDEX set up on another device, the folder structure should be relatively the same. My folder structure is like just, just annoyingly different enough. So this took me a few minutes to transfer everything, but on that tiny screen, it felt like a lot longer than that. Once that was all over, the built-in launcher populated with games, so that was actually a nice touch. For some reason, I had to add 3DS manually, but uh, it's all there. I wanted to immediately boot up a Game Boy Advance game, so I did just that, and it asked me to download Pizza Boy. Who the f uses Pizza Boy? I hated this app. I quickly closed that and just downloaded RetroArch and installed the necessary cores. Then the iNeo wanted more specific cores, so I downloaded more cores. The iNeo launcher does allow you to choose which emulator you'd like to run your games in. It feels easier to me to choose your preferred emulators on this launcher than it is on Daiji Show or Retroid's own launcher. So I actually don't mind this launcher that Ioneo just made. I just don't like how annoying the setup is. I feel like that whole thing could be a lot more streamlined than it is on other devices. Game Boy Advance games run as great as you would expect and they look absolutely stellar on this screen. This is the perfect handheld for Game Boy Advance games. I can't think of a better way to play them besides original hardware. But of course, if you're gonna be spending around $250 on a device, you'd probably wanna play a little more than Game Boy Advance games on here. You might as well make the most of this device. I installed Dolphin from their website on this tiny ass screen. It honestly didn't run as good as I would've hoped. I guess I'll have to experiment with a couple of different versions of Dolphin. It's fine, but don't expect full speed GameCube games. Some games will work just fine, but some might not be playable for you. Sonic ran pretty terrible. Soul Calibur just wouldn't even load, but honestly, Metal Gear Twin Snakes is running pretty freaking good. So I guess your mileage will definitely vary here. Same thing with PS2 as well, but maybe a little worse. 
I would struggle to recommend this for GameCube or PS2 emulation. This is running at half resolution and it's still running real slow. But I was surprised to see that it can emulate Nintendo Switch games. Nothing crazy though. It ran Sonic Mania great. Very rarely there would be like a flash of black, which is a sign of the device struggling a little bit, but it even handled the 3D areas in Sonic Mania just fine. So if you wanna emulate some smaller Switch games, you might be able to do that on here if you can find a Switch emulator to download. But again, I wouldn't get this specifically for Switch emulation because you might be disappointed by the performance of a particular game. If it's N64 games that you wanna play, those run great. Having dual thumbsticks comes in handy here. You get the slowdown where you normally do in a game like Perfect Dark, but that just means the emulation is accurate. Gripping the thumbsticks in this way and pressing the shoulder buttons at the same time is a little weird. It's a strange shape to be gripping like this, but I didn't hate it. If you're able to find a copy of Citra laying around, 3DS emulation is also pretty decent on here. Give your game a chance to compile the shaders, then once it's done, it's not gonna be like the perfect 3DS experience, but it's pretty decent. I mapped the right stick click to swap screens, even though this device only has one screen, I actually kind of like playing certain 3DS games like this. It's pretty fun playing a 3DS game on a Game Boy Micro style device. There's supposed to be a guy there. He's completely transparent. <laughs> Other consoles like Game Boy, even DS, they run just fine. Obviously NES and Genesis and SNES all run great too. All of your retro stuff's gonna be just fine. For those home consoles though, you're gonna have black bars on the sides of the screen. Those are best played in 4x3, in my opinion. Retro Game Core saw that I was messing around with this device and he specifically warned me that these retro home console systems will scale a little weird on this weirdly proportioned display. This will cause some weird artifacts like the life bar in Mega Man X to look weird, among other things. In the RetroArch settings, you can go ahead and turn integer scaling on and overscale on. This will cut off the top and bottom of the screen a little bit, but those parts might have been cut off by the CRT anyway on those old consoles. That's pretty much exactly what Retro Game Core told me anyway. If your goal is to play anything prior to GameCube games on here, you will probably love this thing. If your goal is to play all those games and then maybe tinker around with some GameCube, PlayStation 2, maybe even 3DS or Switch emulation with the expectation that things might not play all that great, then you might actually love this thing even more. My whole goal here is to just keep your expectations in check, okay? If you're buying this thing for GameCube and PlayStation 2 emulation, there's better devices out there that can handle those games a little bit better. If you'd like to get this thing as your first emulation handheld, I'm not sure this would be a great first experience for you. Retro Game Core has a ton of guides. He has one specifically on setting up Android emulation handhelds. I'm sure he will have one specifically for this device pretty soon. But there are other devices that I think would be better for an entry level emulation handheld experience. The RG Cube is set up ready to go right out of the box. The Retroid Pocket series at least downloads the emulators for you when you're setting it up. The Ioneo Pocket Micro could have at least done that. At least you get a good launcher right out of the box, but you still gotta set that thing up. It's still kinda early for this device. Some of these quirks could be updated via firmware. I'm not sure if the headphone jack issue can though. Otherwise, as somebody who's capable of downloading Moopin myself, I actually really like this thing. Games look great on it. It's a great form factor that's capable of a lot of stuff more than I thought it would be capable of. I wasn't expecting it to play some of this stuff at all. A tiny bit more power would have gone a long way with GameCube emulation, but the fact that it's even capable of it at all is I guess fine. I really think the excellent D-pad, the excellent screen, the gorgeous build quality and design, and this premium feel is what's carrying this thing a lot. It makes up for a lot of its shortcomings. 250-ish dollars is a lot for something that can play Game Boy Advance games, but have you looked up Game Boy Micros on eBay recently? Or even just modded Game Boy Advances? The prices out there are absolutely unhinged. If you want something great and cheap, 
check out the RG35XXSP. That is also a phenomenal device capable of more than just Game Boy Advance emulation. If you want something premium feeling that's capable of a lot more than Game Boy Advance emulation, this might just be the guy for you. So what do you guys think about the Aya Neo Pocket Micro? Were you eyeing this thing when it was doing its pre-orders? Usually these things are pretty hard to get if you don't do the pre-order, but I saw it seemed like it was available when I was just looking at it. Only one of the colors though. I also saw that there was a like more retro styled color that was more money and I didn't opt to do that because I was already spending enough money as it was. Make sure to leave your thoughts on this in the comments below, at me on Twitter, any and all of this other social media garbage. We got new videos here all of the time. We're also over on twitch.tv slash Wolfden where I mess around with this stuff live. So you could help me out or we could just generally discuss it live. Of course, the most important thing that you could do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here so you know when the new videos are up or share this video with a friend, a friend who wants to get one of these. Thank you very much. I just broke my phone. Goodbye.